number 14. How old is too old for hip hop? Uh, this was a sort of a three parter done recording uh, with the homie Ofe, uh, mainly because I was driving and the phone kept cutting out. But there's a little bit of weird editing. Sorry about that. Uh, you get the gist of what the whole thing was about. So. If you're tuning in and you want the bonus song that's at the end here, make sure you become a patron at Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash KJ52. Tons of unreleased music on there. All it takes is 10 bucks to support the podcast, and you get like three albums worth almost of unreleased music. So, hope you guys dig it. God bless. One love. But I uh, want to talk about this whole thing of age and relevancy in hip-hop, and uh, appreciate your, uh, your opinion your uh, point to my counterpoint, if you will. Yeah. But anyway, let me uh, kind of set this podcast up for those who might be joining so they at least get some context. Um, I want to first of all say, full disclosure, none of this comes with a heart of malice or hate or, uh, or you know, vengeance or <laughs> a lot of guys will say, well, let's have a discussion and then just use it as a way to like get back at somebody or vent something. But <laughs> None of that. That's not what I'm trying to do here. In fact, it was really, I was trying to explain so much on this discussion that I was like, it warranted a podcast. But, um, so, um, shout out to my homies over at Track Stars Universe. Uh, they are a great podcast slash radio show slash Facebook group slash, you know, just champions for the culture of Christian hip hop. Uh, I'd almost call them like the barbershop, uh, the barbershop talk of Christian hip hop. You think that's a accurate assessment? That's good, man. That's good. Yeah. So uh, when we say barbershop talk, I think that's kind of what we talk about in hip hop, where it's like, what do you talk about when you're getting your hair cut with your homies? You know, that's when you discuss and debate and argue. And, you know, it's where men sharpen each other, I guess, is a good way to put it. Uh, but if you're of the hip hop context, you know, we hold our barbershops in very high regard. That's right. But um, anyway, um uh, so they were having this discussion over there, which came from a poll from a fan who I have to say again, he wasn't trying to be mean. He was actually, you know, a big fan. And, but he made a poll and the poll was something to the effect of like, is KJ52, or no, he said KJ52 used to be the king of, I still can't say it without laughing. The king of Christian hip hop was what he said. Is he still relevant to now? And he, you know, the, the poll was like, yes, he is. No, he's not. He needs to hang it up. Or who's KJ? That was like the three options. So I didn't, you know, the only reason I really knew about this is because they added me to the group. And so anytime something gets posted, I see it or it just shows up in my feed. So I was like, all right, I'll go over and check it out. Um, I don't usually jump into that stuff because it's kind of like, you know, it's a little egocentric to be like, throw your name in there. Um but as I was watching sort of the discussion about it or about me, I did what I usually do, which is I started trolling all the answers, which I went in there as my own name, not as KJ. So no one knew that was me or unless you really knew what my real name was. So I just started putting like, yeah, he sucks. He's terrible. You should hang it up. His music's terrible. Don't listen to it. So I'm just, <laughs> just posting negative things after one after the other. Some people caught it. Some people didn't. Um, but all that to be said, you know, it, it did sort of beg the question. And so I, I took a minute in there to kind of explain, you know, where I was at, and what I was doing. But it does sort of beg the question, which is, you know, what is the cutoff age for hip hop? You know, is there, a, you know, like if you work a job, most jobs have a mandatory retirement age, right? You know, they're like, here, yeah. here's your gold watch and your 401k, get out of here. Um, music is a little different, but you know, in a lot of ways there is sort of a, I don't know, forced retirement, but, uh, it's almost like the hip hop generation has grown up now. It's like, so we're into uncharted territory where I feel like the Gen Xers, which is my sort of my group, you know, we might be the first generation to kind of keep going anyway, yeah. before I kind of chime in with my thoughts, I was curious what you think about this whole thing and, uh, and don't be nice to me just because I'm on the phone with you. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, so what I think about the whole thing, man, it's such a big, I mean, that's such a complex question, I think, especially because we're coming from also a kingdom mindset as well, where 
it's not just this, you know, it's not, it's so much more than just music. So I think that separates this conversation altogether because I think yeah. that the easy, I think the easy answer to this that people would just automatically jump on would be, okay, marketing, um, you know, how, how you market yourself, maybe the production, the quality in the production, the team around you. And I, and I think there might be some, there's something there, but I don't think that that can be the only um, answer to this. Um, but I think first of all, you know, the, I didn't get, I, I didn't get a chance to check out the poll, but um, I think being in the, I think being in music in this industry with, with different artists and being in ministry for such a long time, I think one thing that we've had to develop immediately is um, thick skin. You know, I've, yeah. I've been a, I've been a youth pastor, a youth leader. Um, right now I currently serve as a pastor in Miami and um, you know, you just have to have thick skin here. You know, people automatically feel that they can always throw, you know, their two cents about you. You know, I I was about to preach on a Sunday morning and as I'm getting my mic and everything hooked up, the lady that works in the audio, she just she told me right before I'm about to preach, she said, You're not having a good day, are you? And I'm like, No, I'm having a good day. She's like, Well, you just look terrible today and your hair just it just does not look good today. And I was just like, Oh <laughs> All right, thank you. I'm like, All right, well thanks for the heads up. You know, you just have to have thick skin because people right. just wanna tell you whatever, man. And um and you know, for them to do that poll, it might have not been, you know, intentionally to to be offensive, but it's just man, it's just it is offensive, you know, um, for somebody to be like, Is K J five two still relevant? And I think in their defense, bro, you know, um, you know, you as an artist from the you know, as a fan standpoint and someone that doesn't know you, I think they assume that you don't read this, that you're you're not really accessible you don't pay attention to any of this, you know, there's no way that you're ever going to read it. And I think that's why when they catch that you're on there and you leave a comment, it kind of catches them off guard. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I think that, but I think we just as people and as a body of Christ, I think we need to be careful how we word these things. Cause it's for somebody to say, are you still relevant? It's kind of like saying, um, I'm holding on to KJ five, two from 10 years ago and nothing else has ever happened. Cause to say somebody's still relevant, they're saying, the music that you're making right now um, doesn't exist. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I think that's a problem that we have as artists. People are always going to hold you to where they think your peak was at, and yeah. anything after that is is kind of irrelevant. You know, you're you're still going to be the coke frying cheeseburger. You're still going to be Deer Slim. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because people want to hold you to that. So um, yeah. So I think that's like the immediate. To me, that's like the immediate thing is. Before even finding out when a person is supposed to retire from from hip hop, I think it's more of, you know, when are the fans or when are the people gonna stop holding artists to a a, a point of reference that they prefer? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I, I totally would. I, I totally hear what you're saying. I think that sounds great in theory. I think the reality though is that we're all guilty of this. You know what I'm saying? And it's kind of like, you know, it's almost like sports where you might go oh, that quarterback peaked, you know, in his first five to ten years. That's when he was the man. And now he's just a uh, he's just a backup quarterback or he's just a side carrier or he's X, Y, Z. And I think the kind of the, you know, and again, maybe that's just a music industry thing where it's like if you're not at the top, then anything else is at the bottom. You know what I'm saying? And I think it's really not yeah. even a good analogy because the reality is you can find your place in the music industry on so many different levels. I don't even call it different levels. I would say it's so many different roles. Platforms. Yeah. yeah it's so yeah, that's right. So many different platforms. And I think the pressure is to say, well, when you were at this platform, that was your, that's what was your highest platform. And the funny thing was, because someone you know, cause someone kind of said, you know, to counter what I was saying was because basically what I told him was like, look, anything I'm doing now is the exact same thing I was doing five years ago, ten years ago, fifteen years ago. The crowd sizes have not changed platforms haven't really changed maybe the sales have changed but that's changed for everybody you know but i'm like things have not really changed for me your perception of them might be changed but his counterpoint was well dude you can't deny that dear slim run you had from like this year to that year and i'm like i hope you understand that when that quote-unquote dear slim run that you're talking about i was still living in an apartment you know driving a minivan 
just just hoping to God I make it to the next year. Like there was no wow. point where I was at that going, yeah, I'm here, I'm, I did it. You know what I mean? So like it's this weird perception. Like that's when you were like you were living it up. And I'm basically trying to say is for someone who actually lived through it and is still living through it, that it that wasn't as glamorous as you think it is. And this isn't mm. as unglamorous as you think it is. You know, the reality is, is all of it is about a platform. And it's really it's really less about the actual platform it's more about your perspective on it. Now, if I was sitting here in 2017 and I'm sitting here going, yeah, every, every tour I do, I'm losing money. And I'm going this much money in debt. And no one's showing up for the shows. And you know what I mean? Like, yeah, then you could definitely yeah. say I'm trying to force something. You know what I mean? I'm trying to force something that's not there. You know, and I know guys that are like that. You know, like they're still trying to reclaim their glory from the past. But usually it's guys that like took and just stopped and they tried to jump back in a couple years later or 10 years later and they can't recreate where they were at then. But my point yeah. was, was like, here I am in 2017. I've crowdfunded 300% of the stuff I've done. You know, I launched my own shoe. I did two headlining tours. Uh, I'm still playing for, you know, I played for, you know, almost 10, 20,000 middle school kids on a tour I did, I'm a teaching pastor, you know, and on and on and on and on. But all those things just make you sound egocentric. So I was like, look, all those things count for nothing except for knowing who Christ is. You know, it's like what Paul, you know, when they when the Corinthians were challenging Paul, he's like, look, all right, fine. I'll list all my accomplishments to you. And you know what? They mean nothing. You know, he's like, I was a Hebrew of the Hebrews and I circumcised on the eighth day. And, you know, he's like, I got the credentials, man. I got the pedigree, but it really means nothing. But I do want to say, like, I don't think these discussions are bad. I don't even mind them because I think the reality is we're now in Star Trek land where we are boldly going where no one has gone before. Like, you know what I mean? The idea that you could be in your 40s and still do music on a on a certain level, that's a new concept. You know what I mean? That wasn't yeah, but there I think, 10 years ago. I think ago. that the... Uh... The um, like being able to understand the the question that 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 is posed, right? For me, the challenge is that many times that people say, you know, it's okay. They say KJ five two still relevant. I think that it's an unfair um, uh, question, not because we shouldn't, you know, I, like like you said, the the hip hop barbershop, the conversation that it's going to happen in music. That's like it's going to happen. There's nothing wrong with it. Right. But it's really getting back to the to the actual question that they're asking because they're not asking based on um, album sales, based on um, right. touring, based on how, um, how many people are there in your shows. I think that the when people actually ask, oh, is, is is an artist still relevant? They're saying because he doesn't sound like my favorite time when I heard him, or he doesn't sound like the first time I've ever heard him, which brings like nostalgia. You know, like what I told you. Yeah. One of my one of my favorite albums that, that uh, of KJ52 is collaborations. You know, and then you were like yeah. telling me, you know, that's probably one of the ones that people told me I sold out. <laughs> you know, so everyone right. has their point, their their you know their reasons for whatever. But it's going back down to it. Like, look, shows having you know people still show up for the for your concerts. Um, you're still touring. So really, what are they asking? Like, is is quality as far as production not? not up to par has your production gone down you know then we can really answer the question but if you just put a like this this general thing like is he still relevant my biggest question is what does relevance mean to a person like it, it can mean something different yeah, for everyone well, it's a, yeah it's a very individual thing but yeah and see, yeah. This is the other thing i kind of said when i was hopping in there was like look the reality is i can list all these things but it's only relevant to you if you're paying attention. And the reality is that most of the Christian hip hop world is up. Yo. How's that sound? Any better? Yeah, a lot better, bro. You were in the boonies yeah. or something. I was in the middle of the Everglades. <laughs> Fighting gators. It's on the horse, bro. Anaconda. It was well, anyway, bad, we can pick up pick up where we left off. Um so I think basically I was just saying that, you know, I think the reality is like 
we all come into an artist at one point and we usually exit at a different point. You know what I mean? Like even if you might be the, <laughs> even if you're the biggest Nas fan, you know what I mean? You might exit at some point on whatever album, you know what I mean? So you may not know everything he's currently doing, or you might, I mean, I, I think the other problem is that I think in, in, in mainstream sides, you know, you see these new tours popping up, like the I Love the 90s tour, and all these rappers from the 80s and the 90s are going out and touring arenas again, you know? I mean, they, yeah. came, they came here and played where I was. I live in Fort Myers. It was like Kid and Play, Salt and Peppa, you know, Naughty by Nature, and I'm, I'm sure they had, you know, really well attendance. So it's like artists that are legacy acts in the mainstream have still been able to have, you know, they might have had one hit or two hits and that was it but they're able to come back and play just that song and it's funny how we look in our market and go it's almost impossible to have a longevity you know what I mean you know what I'm saying like you don't see I can't think of any of the guys that I was really into that are actively still doing stuff the only one that really comes to mind for me is like maybe a T-bone but he's found you know, his new resurgence, like, in South America, you know, in Latin countries, he's, he's almost, like, re, completely rebranded himself as a Latin Spanish rapper, you know what I mean? And he's killing it. And he's killing it, right? But yep. why does he have to do that? Why couldn't he just continue on with his normal thing? Why did he have to all of a sudden just be, you know, I saw him, you know, he was rapping over, like, EDM sort of house music, you know what I mean? There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I, I wouldn't fault the guy for that by any means, but it's certainly not what I came into listening to T-Bone with, you know? Or yeah. guys like, you know, Grits or SFC or PID or Freedom of Soul or LPG. You know, these are like the Christian hip-hop that I came up on. And honestly, you know, even, even the guys that I came in with when I first got my record deal, you know, like, around 2000 I can count on my hand how many of those guys I know are still actively making music and even a smaller mm-hmm. amount that are actively touring you know and it yeah. makes me wonder like why did those guys have to get out why did they have to retire why can't they you know tap into an audience that stays with them as they grow older mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying it's like I feel like you know, Bible, you know, scripture says, you know, with gray hairs come wisdom. It's like, sure, you're not going to have the same perspective as you did at 20, 25, but what's to say you can't share the perspective of someone at 35 or 45? I mean, you have wisdom that, or, or life experiences that can speak to another person of your age, you know? Because, because it's a and double-edged sword for an artist. It, it's yeah, a double-edged it sword, it you know, because let's say for... For instance, what you're saying right now, let's say somebody is screaming, KJ52, you know, like, um, I wish you would, you know, you know, be more relevant, market more for the younger generation, change your production, you know, change your flow up a little bit, right? Let's say they, they tell you to do that. And let's say KJ52 does that. You know what they'll be screaming is here comes right. this, this, this guy that is past his prime trying so right. hard to be relevant again. But... If right. you stay continuing to do what you're doing, and like what you're saying right now, um, offering wisdom from a different perspective, they're questioning if you're just out of the, you know, out of the reality of what's what's happening in Christian music, you know? Yeah. The double-edged sword. Well, that's, it is funny you say that. So I, I, I will have to admit that there has been a challenge for me to, you know, I, I, hate, the, I hate the word adapt because that's not really what it was. I looked at things more as going... Well, if you have an old laptop, you just keep updating the software and it'll work just as good as a brand new laptop, right? So hmm. styles change and production changes. So my challenge, which I've actually enjoyed, is like how do you incorporate what is modern into a way that is still, you know, affecting itself? Can you say that last time again? And you broke up. Can you say that again? Really enjoyed, just saying, I was just saying I've actually enjoyed that challenge. You know what I mean? I've enjoyed okay. being my true self musically, but still being 
connective to what is going on in hip hop right now. But I couldn't do that if I didn't have people around me that were younger than me that were speaking into my life from a stylistic standpoint or things like that. So, um, but I'm also realistic to know that like, I don't have any desire to be that goofy poppy youth group rapper, even though that was never a reality, but I'm just saying, you know, if someone's like, you should do another cheeseburger song. I'm like, absolutely not. Like that was just what was running through my head at 26 years old. I'm not in that same mind state. You know what I mean? I have other things I want to talk Mm -hmm. about. If you like that, I'll kick that song for you, no problem. But I'm not writing a Dear Slim Part 3 just because you feel like you want to recapture something from your childhood. You know what I mean? So Yeah, there's um, there's a thing. There's a, there was an, uh, kind of on what we were talking about right now, kind of what you just said right now. I was reading an article, and it was speaking about Drake and um, speaking about, you know, is he going to be that, you know, washed up rapper in a couple of years from now? Is, is he going to be going through that, you know, aging in hip hop and how he's going to, how it's going to work out for him, right? And this is what it said um, and from Drake's perspective. It said this. It said, regardless of whether he quits hip hop for good, Drake knows that to avoid the swamp of irrelevancy, he has to evolve beyond rap. And kind of like well, that's what you're saying. It's a normal right. thing in hip hop. It's a normal thing in music. You're going to evolve because music is evolving. Hip hop has evolved. Then it says, but more than being wholeheartedly embraced as the best rapper out, all that matters to Drake is that he never retraces his steps. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want us to talk to him like he's at Drake making take care four years ago because he's at a different place, a place that is not restricted by the rules of hip hop. And I think that's kind of like what you're saying right now. You know, it's okay. I understand that as an artist, you know, you're gonna have to evolve. You know, because music is evolving, but it's you don't also want to retrace your steps. And that's what's, I think that's something that's been happening with you where people want to continue, they want to tell you to move forward as they're holding you back. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, and the funny thing is too, I mean, you think about too, about other genres, like you don't, you don't see the same stigma. Like it wasn't considered, you know, you had rock and then you had alternative rock and then you had classic rock and then you had heavy metal and then you had, you know I mean? There was all these sub genres in rock, but if you even look at the term classic rock, no one looks at that as like less, you know, less relevant than regular rock. You know what I'm saying? And you always see those in the rock genre or even other genres, like they really pay homage to their pioneers oh, yeah. or to those oh, yeah. that like you'll see them they're wearing you know the Led Zeppelin shirt or the Rolling Stone shirt or you know what I'm saying like you don't see that now in this in our genre now maybe that's just because our genre is too young and you know what I mean we're always been like this sort of stepchild of regular hip hop but you know it is kind of sad that there is no it, it, I think the problem too is that people come into Christian rap at a certain point it's not like they grew up listening to Christian rap. You know what I'm saying? You can grow up listening to hip-hop now. You can have your dad educating you about Beastie Boys and Public Enemy and LL Cool J and all that stuff, and it's not weird. But you never hear about someone going, yeah, I grew up with Christian hip-hop. That's all we played in our household. Now, you might hear that 10 years from now, but currently you don't hear that. It's like someone got saved, threw away their music, and now they want to listen to Christian rap. You know what I mean? So are you are you saying that like when um, the the negative effect that an artist an aging artist an artist has been around for a while that that that's played a uh, that's going to help that out you know when you have this generation that grows up and they're able to say hey look I used to rock with you know Cross Movement I used to rock with Lecrae you know yeah. 20 years from now you think that's going to help the the kind of like the respect or paying homage to what the artist has done maybe I don't know you know it's hard to say I mean again we're like we're in Star Trek land. We are boldly going where no one has gone before. But again, why is, why is, okay, can you name a single Christian hip hop artist over 40? Besides T Bone. Maybe T Bone? Try and name yeah, five. T-bone. Name five. Timo, uh, I'll say T Bone. I'll say uh, Big King. You've said T Bone three times. 
<laughs> no, no, oh, <laughs> T-Bone, Big King, and from the Big King and the SS mob. Yeah, but Big King, he's not, um, he's not making music anymore. Oh, you mean still making music? Oh, yeah, no, no, no. That's what I'm no. saying. <laughs> I'm done. five guys yeah, I'm, over 40 that are still actively I'm making music. Right. So yeah, you're saying no T-Bone? Idea. Maybe you could say Ambassador, maybe? You know? Yeah. I think he dropped a project a year ago, but... I know he's more focused. But then people are going to ask again. He's not really relevant, right? I don't know. I guess that's, I, I would never. See, I'm never like the one to go, you're not relevant anymore, because I think everyone has relevance to their own tribe. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just saying, I, I'm not even saying relevancy. I'm just saying people that are actively out there doing their music, whether that's touring, recording, you know, the things that an artist does. I don't mean just like, hey, guy's 45, he went in the studio, made an album. I don't think that's actively being an artist you're just making an artistic expression you know what i'm saying but i meant as a career yeah. why don't we have career artists over 40 right yeah. whereas you and i right now could name in a blink of an eye 10 rappers over 40 in the mainstream yeah that are still active you know what i'm saying yeah 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 you're right well you know i'll say I mean? toby mac boom <laughs> yeah but i mean come on Everyone would, he would even know, tell you I that know. he would not consider himself a hip hop. Okay, so. No, I know. You know what I mean? So I'm just like, yeah. why is there this discrepancy, right? I get it. We're a smaller genre. You know, we're still struggling for some degree of relevance. But if we're having this much success also at the same time, right? If Lecrae is on a mainstream label, if NF, even though both of these would not consider themselves Christian artists, if both of these guys are both debuting high social club is on a mainstream label you know we're about to see a new crop of christian hip-hop artists hit the hit come out you know through through word i mean we're seeing more success on every avenue than ever right and yet why is there no success on longevity artists you know is that the audience's fault is it the artist's fault is it the culture's fault like why you know what I mean? Because if you look at it, let's just look at it from a church world perspective, right? Name me 10 successful pastors or ministers or whatever over 40. You know what huh. I'm saying? We could go on and on. There's tons of pastors that are successfully doing their ministry over 40 years old. If anything, they're actually looked yeah. at as like, you know, as more revered, highly sure. regarded. Right. Now, I'm not saying a rapper and a pastor is the same thing. But I'm just saying, why is there this cultural disconnect in something that is so wordy and so, you know... For sure. You know what I'm saying? Is it is it the fans who have not created an audience for them to survive in? Or is it the artists who have not created the art for the fans to embrace? Is it people just bowing out at 35? Is it people not able to adapt? You know, I mean, you know, there's no question this 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 industry is a grind. It's not it's not it's certainly not for the faint of heart by any means, you know. But and yeah. I've had to be realistic too to realize even at this age where I'm at, while I don't feel any sort of like strain physically by any means, but I've also realized like my platform has expanded. I can't even I don't even say that it's changed. I feel like it's expanded. So if I go into something, I have the ability to speak I have the ability to do a graffiti piece. I have the ability to do a concert. I have the ability to do a spoken word piece. And now with this documentary, it's like one more thing that I can do that speaks communicatively that I didn't have five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. So some people would look at that and go, oh, see, dude, you just can't cut it anymore as an artist. You got to do all these other things. But I'm looking at it going, this is what I've always prayed for. You know what I mean? And and I always Mm. always thought for years, like, I had to give one thing up to do another. If I was going to be a speaker, I got to give up the music. But now I'm realizing like the world has changed and they don't care. They just want something to be done, you know, in excellence. So no one's saying you can't do a song in your talk. No one's telling me I can't do a graffiti piece in my talk. No one's telling me I can't do any of these things. If anything, they're like, dude, do whatever's in your tool belt. Right. You know, I mean, and maybe that's where other artists have struggled. I don't know, you know, but all I know is I'm having the best year I've ever had in a long, long time. And I don't mean that like pat myself on the back, but, 
you know, I mean, you could look at any of the rappers that I loved in the 90s and the 2000s. Granted, a lot of them. All right, this podcast was so important, I had to go all the way to Miami just to get Ofe on it. <laughs> <laughs> Such a, I, was, I was feeling so. I was feeling so bad about myself. I need to see you face to face. <laughs> Tell me it's going to be all right. <laughs> uh, but no, let's, uh, let's just kind of finish up the podcast. So we had actually just been chilling here, working on the finishing up the documentary. You came through. It was kind of dope. Um, but uh, I forget where we left off. We were just basically saying that people don't pay attention. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I played you some new music that I'm super excited about. But therein lies the problem. I can't sit in a car with all my former fans right. and explain every song and like have that face-to-face interaction. You know, plus, I mean, the problem too is that you know, like Facebook and most social media tend to algorithm and hide your posts if they're not being re- reposted or shared. So yeah. It makes it really hard to promote these days. Whereas before, like, you need to, oh, I got 200,000 likes on my Facebook page. That means 200,000 people can hear. Yeah, right. It's like, I'd be lucky if, like, one half of 1% can yeah. see it. That's crazy, man. But I've noticed sometimes I've posted things, and out of nowhere, because it's getting shared a lot, someone goes, hey, man, are you still even making music? I'm like, how did you like my page and follow me? You don't even know? But then I realized they're not seeing a lot of the stuff I'm posting. It's true. I don't see any of your posts. Okay. That's actually because I blocked him. But anyway, <laughs> just kidding. Um, Is this connected with what we were talking about before? Absolutely. Too? Like, you still, you kept that? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. We're good. just going to pick up from there. So I'll do three different things. Yeah. But anyway, um, so it's funny because you wanted to go look at the original post that caused all this and they, they took it down. And I was really excited to see the comments. I think KJ52 has the best forward slash worst um, forward slash judgmental fans ever. Is it really that or is it just that's just Christian rap? No, bro. I think that's just Christian rap fans. Yes, but yours, bro. I, I follow special. a lot of different artists, man. It's special. Yours is different. Special breed. I Especially when you put up a, a picture of you at the beach oh with, with, with a whole bunch of cats everywhere. <laughs> I saw the comments there, bro. The infamous cat, cat, uh, cat shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is funny you would say that because now, like, I have to be more cognizant as a pastor, you know, the things that I post and I'm realizing, like, whatever that level is, you know, it is like James. James says, you know, you know, uh, not all of you should be teachers. Your teachers should be judged more severely, and I'm realizing, like, anyway, the point. Point. What I'm saying is, it's funny that we, as elder statesmen or people looking at the other side of thirty, you would think that would add more of a platform that people would value your wisdom and your life experience and right, that the fact that you blazed the trail and that you yeah. have been where many people have been already. But yeah. it's the opposite. Like I've. I've seen so many young artists. Okay, just got called away for this coffee. Anyway, like I was saying, was I've seen uh, or I've met with so many young artists who will ask me for advice, and they will ask me for what to do in a certain situation, and uh, and then once I share that with them they just completely doing their own thing. So what I was saying was, I've met with so many young artists, you know, hey dude, I'm, I'm in this situation, what should I do? And I share with them my wisdom, and then they just don't even listen. They just still end up doing the exact same thing they were gonna do anyway. You know, because I get people to say too, like, dude, why have you not like put out an artist? Why aren't you managing artists? It's like, you can't manage somebody that doesn't want to be managed. Yeah. yeah. You know? Well, I wanted, I wanted to add to that. So, Please go ahead. So, I, I believe, and I've told you before, that I do think you need to manage people because I've talked to KJ for a long time, and um, and he has a lot of he, there's a lot of wisdom. But what you were saying before, you would think that somebody that's been in the game for a while, you know, kind of earned their stripes, that they can say something and people will maybe listen or they will honor the you know the the trail that you left. But it's only in Christian hip hop. No, it's in hip hop primarily that that why is it that the longer you stay in the game, it's kind of like the less people honor 
it lets people kind of respect what the person has done. Why? I think probably the other problem is that people come into Christian hip hop at different points. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's you don't you don't just be like I was raised on Christian rap. It's like you come in at a certain point and you might exit at a certain point, and that's your frame of reference. So there isn't a regard for the past because you might have just discovered it. Yeah. And people are like, you should know blankety blank 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 blank. It's like, why should I know them? I just got saved a year ago. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and you're telling me to go listen to this thing. It's stylistically, it's not my vibe. It sounds old. It reinforces what I might already think is too old school. It reminds me of this kid, like it was like a couple years ago. He's like, yo man, I'm such a big fan of you, but I just feel like you just got to update your style. And I'm like, okay, like, what album are you listening to? He's like, oh, pronounce 5-2. I'm like, you know that's 15 years ago. <laughs> he goes, you have music since then? <sighs> and I'm like, right. you see what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, on one hand, I want to blast this kid. But I'm like, you know what? I just got to lovingly be like, yeah, dude, you should probably, like, hear. And then I just show him new stuff. He's like, oh, that's great. But, again, it's just... It's, it's closer to like discovering something on the beach you know what I mean like oh I just found this thing it's the coolest thing I think it is and it could be something that's 10 years old or it could be something that's you know 5 years old but well let's speak about let's speak about that because we kind of I remember we kind of spoke about that before okay where a person will come to an artist and the, the artist has an option right okay what's going on right now in the game let me kind of um, evolve and adjust my style so to kind of be relevant right, right. or I want to continue to do my own thing and maybe risk sounding outdated but then the way I think it's a double edged sword is because if an artist gets older in the game right tries to adjust himself with what's relevant with what's trendy the, the, the way people might respond to that is Hey, you're too old for this. Hey, um, you know, you know, it's time for you to move on. Yeah. You know what I mean? So then, then the other person that doesn't want to change, he's outdated, and people forget about him. You know, so how how does a person win? I don't know. You got to look at the people that have adapted. Buster Rhymes has been around since the late '80s. He's still, you know, kind of around. Nas is still around. Well, maybe not. Yeah, yeah. maybe these people are still. Well, okay, maybe Tribe Called Quest is a good example. They dropped a record a year or two ago. You know what I mean? It seemed like, but maybe it was just older. Well, well then maybe then what you're saying is, yeah, like, okay, Busta Rhyme, Nas, kind of, Tribe Called Quest, um, maybe it's accepting the, the, the reality of a certain crowd that you're going to keep. Boom. I got to turn my air horn on and blow the air horn right now. <laughs> Where's my air horn? Hold on. There it is. Hold on. Do you have one? Nice. <laughs> yeah. You're, you know what? That, to me, is what you're exactly right. You have to, at some point, go, this is my demographic, and I'm going to put my energy into that demographic. I'm not trying to hit everybody, which right. I think that's where a lot of people go wrong. And I think that's, ultimately, if we tie this all up right here, right now, that is when someone goes, are you relevant anymore? To that group? You're no. Right right. To this group? Absolutely. You see what I'm saying? So it might be like the guy that comes in at 21, he's a youth pastor. He connects really well with kids. Once he hits his 30s and 40s, he might start feeling more passionate for families. He might still be able to go in front of the youth group and connect, but now he's going, I'm a dad, I'm a wife, I'm a husband. Well, well you so, know what, that's so, so accurate. Um, so uh, there's no wife, reason with the shift that. It has to be a, down, a bad thing. Like I have, um, we, have, we have a friend that's in North Carolina, an elder at a church in North Carolina. And he was telling me that the youth leader, who's been the youth leader for the past maybe 20 years, um, he was he was awesome. He was a great youth leader. But they recently had to have a heart-to-heart and a, right. and a very transparent conversation with him. And they told him, look, you need to be praying to God to find out what is the new chapter right. in your life and what, what does it look like. You know, and great if example. he is trying... He, he made a decision of, um, I'm going to try to get into shape. I'm going to um, be more active so I can relate more with the youth. But even when he does all that, it still doesn't guarantee that he's going to relate to them. Nope. Right? So, so, that's so that's so true what you're saying because even as from in a ministry standpoint, like in the congregation, that happens. And it's not a bad thing. It's not saying that, hey, you failed as a youth leader. No. You did such a great job. Right. And now we got to see what else God is going to... Yeah. And there is a few people that can still be relevant on all age groups. 
but that's a very, very, very small percentage. And you're right. And the other problem is that you get comfortable in the way you've always done things. This is what I think happens to a lot of hip-hop artists. That they've always done music this way, that that's what they think is good music, and they continue to do it. And then their fan base shrinks over time. And instead of them going, like, this guy, I got to get in shape, I got to up my game, they just get bitter and they, they quit. Resent. So I think that to me is where I've been challenged to, you know, I've always tried to be very health conscious because I realize it's a young man's game, whether that's from an appearance standpoint. I'm literally sitting here with hair dye in my hair. I'm going to first, I'll be the first to admit it. I have gray hair, but I color my hair every time I get a haircut. And he runs a mile in six minutes and 11 seconds. It's crazy. <laughs> but the point is, I do that because in a perfect world, people would not judge me for having gray hair. But the reality is it is a world where they do that. So I have a choice to either adapt or get out. So this is the reality. And on that note, i got to finish this turmeric ginger, and we are driving back home. Ophi, I'm so glad I made the 300-mile drive to be here <laughs> to get your 10-minute opinion. <laughs> That's awesome, brother. Love you, bro. All right, man. Peace, guys. Cash Holly Stizzle. It's your boy, Fob Twizzle. Congratulations, by the way. KJ with hey, uh, Now I spit it with hopes that they get it But they dumb it in the show with Ray J in it huh, We yep. take sin and think to play with it But why I broke down like my lame gray civic uh, I'm specific to stay way different So I can take the game and put some change in it How in it. the hell to change lanes, get it? You're stuck up in a rut and you're content to stay in it <laughs> yep. huh. So the cycle, the cycles, no discipline, there's no disciples, none. A lot of mission trips, but no revivals. So are we missing it? Do we know no. our Bibles? Do we? Treating it like lines full of typos. Living in a dead world, no, no signs of vitals. None. I take aim like scopes and ten rifles. So you see the rock of love that ain't Brett Michaels. Nope. 